morning guys, Tammy Treyer, treyerwilderness.com and treyerwildernessacademy.com. Welcome to my kitchen. I'm a little, running a little late this morning. Um, it's a beautiful day here. We got out for a walk this morning and I was putting together some extra things for you this morning. You'll find lots of resources today in the description below, so be sure to check that out. I'll wait a little bit here and see if we can get some people joining. Um, talk about uh, food security today, which I think is an extremely important topic. So we will cover that today. I can see some people starting to join in here, so we'll just give it a few more minutes. While we're waiting, look at this gold. Is that not beautiful? That is, wow, that didn't work. There we go. <laughs> That is my dandelion jelly, which we will be making more of. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, it tastes just like honey. So this is our homestead gold number two. Obviously number one is our honey, but this is amazing jelly and very, very easy to make. And I encourage you guys to get out and utilize the dandelions while they're still in bloom. You just cut the tops of the flowers off, you pull all the greens off, and you put them in a nice large jar, and then you add boiling water to it. As you can see, this is not dandelions, this is lilacs. I was so blessed by my dear friend Vicki this weekend. Thank you, Vicki. Um, she, she donated lilacs to the cause, so I am making um, lilac jelly and spearmint jelly, and I'm going to make some more dandelion jelly because it's so amazing. But it's so easy to do. You just put the flowers in the jar, add the boiling water, let it set 24 hours, and um, that way it gets a really good flavor to it, and then you just make your jelly. I use Pomona's pectin, which you'll find a link for down below. Hello, Meadow House. Uh, glad to have you guys joining me. Um, but the Pomona's pectin is down below, and that is an amazing pectin. It is a two-step process. It's very easy. And um, the video that I will be doing on the dandelion and lilac and spearmint jellies, uh, I will also include... Um, hi, Doug. And uh, I will include the instructions on the Pomona's pectin. It is a natural pectin. I just hate using things in my food. I know where this stuff comes from. I know where the lilacs are coming from. I know they're not sprayed. And then you put this pectin and it's got all these ingredients added. Hi, Bill. That you can't, you know, you can't pronounce. You don't know what they are. I just don't feel it's safe. So I like to find as natural of ingredients as I can possibly find. Good morning, Jim. And being able to produce your own food is just so extremely important. Knowing where your food comes from. And again, if you're foraging these things like your dandelions and your lilacs and anything from the wild, make sure you're not uh, foraging them from the sides of the roads where they're getting all the exhaust fumes and dirt as well as from places that may have been sprayed. So I will have a YouTube video um, on the process of the dandelion and the jellies. Um, highly recommend it guys. Dandelion jelly, like I said earlier, tastes like honey. It is absolutely amazing. So you got to try it out. Now, with the food security, some of you may have missed out on the webinar, Good Morning Chad, um, that went out last night. Um, it is still available and will be available for a couple days, so you can use the link below. Good morning, Janet. Um, the food, the uh, webinar I'm referring to is Building Food Security security through food storage and it's an amazing webinar and I highly recommend it um, as most of you know we went six and a half months without an income um, the year of my surgery and we practiced what we preach and that was a blessing because we had plenty of food so we never had to resort to foraging and harvesting solely from the wild we had enough to spare that we were able to share with others and we had plenty left over and we ate like kings and queens but it's because we live a lifestyle of preparedness because we focus on our food security as well as many other aspects of preparedness on our homestead and that's what I want to be able to share with you guys it is so important to not just have a month's worth of food sitting in your home but to really think 
long term. I do a lot. We, we not only can our food, we have dehydrated food that we do. We also uh, purchase freeze-dried food um, and, and traditionally preserve our meats and also can our meats and have a lot of raw ingredients. Now when it comes to a level of preparedness and even wilderness survival where you need to pack food when you go in the woods or if you're in a situation where you need to pack up and go, the beauty is freeze-dried and uh, dehydrated foods are lightweight and um, are in abundance much more so than your canned foods. So it's easier to travel with such things. So when you think about all the different aspects of how you utilize your food or how you may need to utilize your food, it's really important to think of all those things and be sure that you are keeping track of your inventory of food. So if you missed out on that food security webinar last night, the link is down below, but it's treyerwilderness.com slash foodsecurity-fb for Facebook. I just put that link in there so I can um, keep track of things. And there's also another uh, workshop going on this week, and it's uh, Grow Your Own Food. And you can find that link below also, but it's treyerwilderness.com slash growyourownfood. Knowing how to grow your own food, harvest your own food, forage and harvest from the wild. These are so important because if you don't know those skills and something happens to our food supply, what are you going to do? You have to have backups and then backups for backups in place. And that's what we do. That's why when we went six and a half months without an income, although it was a very hard spot to be in, we didn't starve. We had a roof over our head and we were constantly warm because our firewood is another aspect of our extreme level of preparedness. We are constantly thinking about that and constantly keeping our woodshed full. We are now in spring and we have a woodshed that still has half, it's half full of firewood. So abundance, thinking ahead, being prepared and and you know if something were to happen to the mountain man just for example i'm going off a little bit good morning pamela just going off a little bit on the on the level of preparedness you know if something would happen to the mountain man and i would have to go out and, and harvest the firewood i could do it i know how it would take me a lot longer than it takes him and um it would be a lot harder work not that i can't do it but if something happened to him and we didn't have what we have here, there are chances that we would be struggling through the winter months. So when you prepare ahead of time and have extra, that way you're covered when those unexpected events happen. So the same applies for food. So now, um, also for you guys that might be new, um, good morning Sharon. Ah, Sharon Peterson just joined me. When we were speaking of the dandelion jelly, that sweetheart is the one I got my recipe from. And she is the canning guru over at simplycanning.com. And Sharon is my hero when it comes to canning. I hope things are going better for you now. Yeah, this week has been a better week. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it was a rough week two weeks ago <laughs> and last week. But you know what? I want to share this with you guys. Um, you know, last week I was very raw and real. And, you know... I disconnected, I finished with you guys, and for those of you that are faithful, you may understand this, the Holy Spirit just rocked my world. I was just so incredibly empowered, and it was just truly amazing, you know, so when you put your trust in God, and you lean on Him for your guidance, it is amazing what He can do in your life, and I, I think I'm a walking testament of that, because <laughs> you saw I wasn't in a good place last week, it was a rough week. <laughs> it, Sharon, it pops up when you guys join me so I can see you, so I can say hi to you guys. Ah, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for the dandelion recipe. This is amazing. I didn't know dandelion jelly tasted like honey. I would have been making this for years and years. I use it for my um, tinctures and different things, and I use the roots for uh, my teas and things, but I never used it for the jelly. So, oh my gosh, I will never, ever waste another dandelion. Good morning, Carrie. I also wanted to share this with you guys this week. There is some fun stuff coming with this. This is my friend Stacy Lynn. Um, you can find her at uh, Game and Garden and, uh, dot com. And she 
is amazing. I love her faith that she wears on her sleeve, and I love her amazing recipes. So stay tuned. We are going to do some more with this, but you can find the link for her book down below. She does a lot with wild game and what she is uh, harvesting from her garden, so um, her recipes are just amazing. And she's a southern girl, so it's got some really good southern spice in there. Um, also, in the links below are a couple of different resources as to where I purchase some of my food. Um, I realize, I just realized I didn't put one in there, but I will add that in a little bit. But um, Zacon Foods is where I purchase some of my meats. Um, you can find them at treyerwilderness.com slash Zacon Foods. When you connect with them, it is going to be dependent if they are available in your area. The same with um, Bountiful Baskets. Bountiful Baskets is uh, your produce, and um, they are available in certain drop spots. So I will, I also realized I forgot another one on there, but Bountiful Baskets can be found by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Bountiful Baskets. It's nice because in the winter months, and even here, I'm, I was really spoiled in Pennsylvania. We had farmer's markets all over the place. Good morning, Terry. And we had... Um, fresh, you know, farms that had stands within miles of our home, and they were just all over the place. Same with good butcher shops. Butcher shops with grass-fed meats that were smoked awesome. A lot of people today use the uh, liquid smoke that just does not compare to good Pennsylvania Dutch smoked meats. And we were spoiled. So the first thing we built when we got out here after building our home was our smokehouse. But having those resources, and many of you guys have these resources at your fingertips. Pick your own um, fruits and vegetables from the farms, um, different farms, flea markets, CSAs. Don't miss out on these things. If you are unable or don't have the time to grow your own vegetables or haven't dug into that yet, don't miss out on the resources that are right around the corner for you because out here, I don't have them, and, and I miss them greatly because I could walk out of the farmer's market with a massive box of produce for 35 bucks, and I was just giddy. And being able to get that fresh produce that you know is safe, it doesn't taste like plastic, it has flavor, the tomatoes were to die for. So don't miss out on these resources. This is a time of year, and it's really good when you can eat what is in season. Um, I really believe that that is the makeup of things. And um, I also have strawberries that I will be making jelly with as well as a pie. So I have a deer neck roast in cooking now, and I'll be making a strawberry pie for dinner. So the mountain man's going to be eating good when he gets home today. Um, also, Thrive Market is a great resource for non-GMO foods and organic uh, processed foods. So you can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Thrive Market. Azure Standard is another company that you can actually order online from, but they also set up drop spots if there's enough interest in your area. And you may already have one and not know about it. And you can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Azure Standard. It's A-Z-U-R-E Standard. And then also Thrive Life is a great resource uh, for your freeze-dried foods. And you can do that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash Thrive Life. Now, being able to get good food is so important. I've talked about it, um, making sure that you're getting um, things that have the non-GMO symbol on them and also that say organic. This is like super huge. Good morning, George. Knowing that your food is healthy, knowing that you're not getting garbage is really, really important. And it needs to have that symbol on it because there are companies out there that just have it written that it's non-GMO, but they're not compliant. So I wouldn't trust their food. And I can't trust their food because if I have a spoonful of it, I am sick for a week. And it just isn't worth it. I'd rather starve myself than eat garbage. So uh, good morning. So keep that in mind. Now, I also shared some really um, awesome movies with you in the links below. Um, last week when I was kind of out of sorts, I felt prompted uh, to watch some things. And it's just amazing how God prompts us in our day-to-day -day walk if we're willing to hear it. And um, 
Pure Flix is a Christian-based company that has wholesome, family-quality movies. And they're really awesome company. And it's inexpensive. It's $7.99 a month. And if you're interested in that, you can check it out at treyerwilderness.com slash pureflix. And um, by doing that, I think you get a month free. So check that out. And then I also put in there some that we have just recently watched. Uh, Let There Be Light was in a really amazing um, movie that we watched this weekend. And the Kendricks brothers are the ones who have created, uh, let's see, Courageous, Flywheel, um, Facing the Giants, War Room, and I know there's another one I'm missing, Fireproof. Uh, really good, wholesome movies that focus on the struggles that many have today. Uh, I just want to recommend them because it's so hard to find good quality stuff to watch. There's so much trash, and what used to be R-rated, you know, or PG before is now, I'm saying that backwards, but the stuff that we grew up with was so much more better than what we have now. And it's hard to find stuff that, you know, the F-bomb isn't flying all the time. So if you're looking for quality stuff for your family, there you go. Also, um, you can always go to our YouTube channel. It's family friendly. <laughs> um, let me just see here. I wanted to cover... I have a question for you guys. What are some of your favorite vegetables this time of year? And what do you look forward to in your garden? Um, I picked up my Bountiful Baskets order on Saturday and... I, I was excited because we got a lot of red beets. I absolutely love red beets. You can do pickled red, red beets, but I like to just cook them, boil them up, and just slather them with butter and salt and pepper. And what really caught me funny is one of the ladies next to me that was gathering her, she didn't want her red beets. And I just, I just am like, oh my goodness, you're passing up such awesome, awesome nutrition. And they're also great for juicing. I don't know if you guys have ever tried um, juicing and utilizing red beets they have an amazing flavor the mountain man was very surprised he just kind of like stuck up his nose the first time I started juicing but it your vegetables are often have a lot of sweetness to them the red beets especially and yes Ben absolutely asparagus that was something that I was able to harvest from the garden I have a nice little patch of asparagus and that is so also so very healthy for you all the summer squashes and artichokes absolutely how do you Terry how do you make your squashes I just did a butternut squash on the grill the other night and it was it was really amazing it took a little long to cook but it was really really good that way and artichokes yes I absolutely love artichokes I don't think there's too many vegetables that I don't care for um, I can't even think of any Tomatoes are something that oh, I just get so excited when we have a good fresh tomato because anything that you buy in the store, I'm just always so disappointed. It's waxy and it doesn't have any flavor. But my friend George that popped on here, he and his wife live um, in Washington State and they live close to a lot of pick your own. So they are the ones who have been blessing me these years, over the years, with all the fresh tomatoes and things to make my chili sauce. So they are a blessing. Yes, I know. They're so delicious on the grill, right? I love it. And spaghetti squash. That is the, all the squashes the uh, Mountain Boy really enjoys. Of course, slathered in butter. But spaghetti squash you can do a lot with, too. And people don't realize, you know, how to utilize them. You just, you can cut a squash in half, put it in a glass baking dish with some water underneath it and in the inside. And you want to scoop out your seeds. Bake it at 350 till... The um, inside is soft, and then with the spaghetti squash, you just take a fork and pull on it, and the uh, squash itself starts to come apart, and it looks like spaghetti. So you can put sauce and do all kinds of stuff with it. I do a lot. Can you tell I like butter? <laughs> we put butter and salt and pepper on it. All right, see you later, George. Have a good day. Thanks for popping in. All right, so what are some of your guys' um, favorite things that you harvest from the wild? Um, do you guys do any morelling? I talked the other week about morel mushrooms, and um, I'll sh share some of that with you. If my grandkids leave the summer squashes alone as they roam the garden and eat them all raw, then I'll make soup and saute them. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it's very easy to go through the garden and pick as you go. I do that with my teas, and I had sage, stevia, spearmint tea and cilantro growing and I would pick a leaf out of all of them and and chew on it while I was walking through the garden it felt like I was drinking tea such oh, the freshness of our vegetables in our garden are just amazing 
And I hope you guys uh, don't waste the teas that are growing out in the yards too. We have lemon balm, I have a wild peppermint growing, and I have our spearmint strain from Pennsylvania that is out of this world, which is what I'll be making my uh, tea with or my jelly with, and Jill that usually joins us on here, she told me I should add hot peppers to that to make the jelly. So I'm curious, now i got to see if I can find some hobs. So that's one of the guys' favorites, they love hot stuff. So um, when you are foraging from the wild, you need to make sure that you know for certain that you are identifying the plants well, whether it's that you've already picked them before or that someone has shown you. Mushrooms are something that I stay very clear of unless I am sure because there's too many look-alikes and typically um, that means there's a good guy and a bad guy. Um, right here, hopefully that you'll be able to see this. Right here, these two right here. These are morels. They are very distinct look to them. They have the big open pores and um, there is what they call a look-alike. I don't think it looks like it at all. It's very different because you can see these are more pointed, even though this one here is a little more rounded. They definitely have a distinct look compared to what they consider the look-alike. The difference is that when you slice them in half, the morels are hollow in the center where the look-alike one has fibers in the center and that one is poisonous. So stay away from that. But morels are like the steak of the woods and they are absolutely amazing. Um, I can't have them anymore. I can't have funguses because I am have such a problem with mold, which is really awful. I also enjoy going to help pick them, and I, I'm afraid to pick them because of the reactions that I have, so my guys enjoy them now. I just get to watch them enjoying them. But foraging from the wild is such an awesome, awesome thing, and there's so much around us. Um, and learning how to identify those things is really important. Um, this is one of my favorite books, Edible and Medicinal Plants of the uh, West. And um, that's by Gregory Tilford. If you go back three weeks to where I was talking about foraging in the uh, live videos, I have uh, links to all of those and also on our resource page on the website. Because we love to forage and we love to uh, be able to get as much as we can from the wild. So there's all kinds of berries, your blackberries, your uh, elderberries. Um, elderberries are very medicinal, and I dry those so that I can use them in teas and tinctures uh, over the winter months for healing. And they just have great flavor. I also make syrups and jellies with them as well. So what are some of the things you guys forage? Do you forage anything right now? Are you starting to get into that? Um, what do you guys do in your neck of the woods? And there's stuff everywhere all over the country. Um, some you know, you have on the East Coast, and we may also have them out here on the West Coast, but there's some unique to each coast as well. There's a lot of plants, a lot of good medicinal things out there that are edible, good for you to eat, but good for you to also keep a handle on and, and dry to have in, in your uh, herbal pantry for the winter. Thanks for the Zacon recommendation. We didn't know about them. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Um, that's why I do these things, because there's so many great resources out there for us to be able to get better quality foods. Um, I can't go to the grocery store and buy meat. I, I just can't. And I get really sick, and I don't like my men eating it either, knowing that there's pink slime and everything else in our food. But knowing that the game we harvest every year um, is eating the best of the best, and they're untainted... You know, it's the best best way for us to go. But I often like to get chicken and because our chickens are for our eggs. And occasionally we'll butcher one, which is extremely good eating, extremely good fat. Um, but Zacon has some really good chicken, and they have a lot of different meats. So I'm glad you found that helpful. All right, guys. I got to get off of here because I have some writing to do and I have jelly to make. I'm going to be making my lilac jelly for those of you that popped on later. Um, same as with the dandelion, you just take the flowers, remove all the greens, put it in a jar, add boiling water and cover it and put it in the refrigerator. I like to keep it in there for 24 hours and then I process it and make my jellies. So definitely don't miss out on this gold right here. The dandelion jelly is amazing and uh, as I mentioned some of you may have missed out. 
I use Pomona's pectin. You can find the link in the description below. And that is awesome to use with your jams and jellies. And it's an all natural. You can also use apple to uh, create your pectin to get a natural pectin. But don't miss out also on the uh, food security webinar. I really think that you guys will find it helpful. And you can find that by going to tryourwilderness.com slash food security dash FB. And all the links are down below. I will add Azure in there and Thrive Life. And I know I forgot another one, but I will jump when I jump off of here, I'll add those links in there for you guys. I'm so glad to have so many of you joining me, and I love the interaction. I hate talking to a camera. It's so nice to be able to talk to you guys. So thank you guys for taking the time to join me. I know your time is just as valuable as mine, so I appreciate you taking the time. Terry says that she'll be making apricot later this week. I love apricot jelly. That is awesome. Chad, if anyone needs prayers, feel free to uh, PM me on Facebook. You don't need to give details. Oh, and you're very welcome, Chad. Chad is one of my amazing prayer warriors, and um, he... He's a champ, so if you do need prayers, don't hesitate to reach out to him. If you need prayers, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us as well. And um, you guys are welcome. I'm going to say a quick, quick prayer for you guys, and then I will jump off of here. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this time today. Thank you for these people taking the time out of their busy days to spend time with me. Just bless them. Bless those that are in need of healing and those that are in need of strength. And just wrap your loving arms around all of them. Bless the rest of their weeks. And Lord, just thank you for all you do, for the many blessings you provide, and what you're going to do. We know it'll be amazing. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Guys, remember to see the blessings, regardless how little or how large. Every little blessing counts, and every little blessing has purpose, and it will change your spirit, it will change your thinking, and... Trust me, we all need that. We all struggle in different ways. We all have different valleys and different things going on in our lives. So don't miss the blessings because, guys, those are the things that are just the most amazing. I've seen so many miracles, so many blessings, and just want to inspire you and encourage you to see yours. So, guys, take care. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next week. God bless.